At the center of it all is Congressman Matt Gates, who is rejecting calls from House leadership to pass another continuing resolution and instead wants votes on single subject, standalone spending bills. Because continuing resolutions, Gates argues, only drive the country down the same debt, the same decline, and the same decay. For many Americans, it feels like Washington versus the rest of us. And remember, it's not just about what corruption is uncovered, but what actually gets done to stop it, all in the pursuit of a new era of honest and responsible government that puts Americans first. Congressman Matt Gates joins me now. Thank you, Congressman, for being on the program. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. So part of your strength in your fight with uh, McCarthy and your fight for the country, quite frankly, is your assumption that the government will shut down as you and your colleagues uh, work this out. Tell us more about what you're doing and the purpose behind it. Well, since 1997, this country has been governed by a series of continuing resolutions and omnibus spending bills. And in plain speak, what that means is that your elected representatives take only one consequential vote on government funding over the course of a year. And it's an up or down vote on everything all at once. And my belief is that that's one of the reasons why we have a $33 trillion debt with two trillion dollar annual deficits in front of us as far as the eye can see. So my theory of the case in divided government is that we actually can make spending cuts, but not in an up or down vote on all of the government all at once. We have to force the agencies to come before us, present their budgets. We have to have open amendments and then let the votes fall where they may and let the Democrats get up and explain why American taxpayers are paying for gay pride parades in Prague. Let them explain why we're paying the Department of Homeland Security to take people from the border and distribute them all over the interior of our country. If we had this opportunity, I think we would broaden the conservative base and we might just save the country while doing so. Are you getting a lot of pushback about this? Because you've definitely been someone who has been out front and center fighting for what you believe in. You've had criticism from colleagues, et cetera, that, you know, some of the rhinos, et cetera, that just want to go about business as usual and not make waves. What do you say to them? Yeah, I had one colleague in a closed door meeting yesterday say, well, what Gates is going to make us do is very difficult because I just want to be able to say that I want less spending. But if you make me vote on the individual bills, then I might have to vote on specific amendments and programs on those bills. And that's just a real hard thing for me politically. And gosh, if things in my district were not able to make a case based on merit for their inclusion in the federal budget, I wouldn't want them removed. And so that's why I'm against the Gates plan. I thought that was a particularly interesting take, but it is indicative of the disease ha that has infected this yeah. place where we just keep doing the same thing over and over. I think we need to break the fever. That means even if we have a small temporary shutdown, which I don't want, it might be worth it if it resulted in a paradigm change in how we budget in Washington. Absolutely. And going back to the Bob Menendez case and how it eerily sort of marries, uh, mirrors everything we know about Joe Biden corruption, I want to show everyone um, this email. It's from Hunter's business partner, Eric Sherwin, to Hunter Biden. An aide of Senator Menendez reached out to Sherwin to request uh, the then vice president to host a U.S.-Spain council meeting. Sherwin then forwarded the request to Hunter to discuss. The vice president has an entire staff to field requests like this. Why do you think a Senate aide chose instead to reach out to a private citizen instead? You know the answer to that question, Kimberly. It's because it was an open secret in this town that if you wanted to control Joe Biden, you went through Hunter. And people had to pay him off or they had to do favors or they had to trade access. And maybe, just maybe, the best defense Hunter Biden has is that everyone's doing it in this town. Not everyone, but people like the Menendez family, if you believe in the facts as alleged in this indictment, you use a family member to go and gild ill-gotten gains out of people who are willing to pay you, right. and then you deliver them a government result that they wouldn't have otherwise gotten. It's true for the Menendezes, it's true for the Bidens, and we should root it out because this country deserves better. Couldn't agree more. And the Menendez indictments proves uh, that the DOJ is able to read through the lines. Uh, a family member set up some meetings. Next thing you know, a U.S. senator is sitting on top of some 
gold bars. And quite frankly, nine members of the Biden family have been identified as receiving money from China. Why no movement? I'm very disappointed in Speaker McCarthy for having not sent a subpoena to Hunter Biden. Matter of fact, I was so frustrated by it, I drafted my own subpoena to Hunter Biden, and I put it on social media, said, Speaker, all it needs is a date and a signature. You and I both know, Kimberly, we both know that during right. the first year when Democrats were in control, they brought Donald Trump Jr. before Congress th three times, and he did nothing wrong. He had a nothing 20-minute meeting, and they brought him here three times. There is no excuse for the fact that we have not brought Hunter Biden in, that we have not asked tough questions. And you know what? If we find more evidence, we can bring him in again. And if this was a serious endeavor, that is precisely what we would be doing. Yeah, I don't disagree. I remember coming home and showing him uh, the headline across the Chiron, which says Donald Trump Jr. guilty of treason, punishable by death. That was a good night. Uh, but I remember, but it was a pleasure I remember to have you on, Don, Congressman Matt on. Gates. Yes. Hold on. I remember when I said, Don, why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep subjecting yourself to this? You could fight these things. He said, you know what? I'm never pleading the fifth and I'm never fighting it. I did nothing wrong and I will come in and answer questions as long as these people want to ask them to me. And probably a lot of lawyers would suggest otherwise. And you see how the Hunter Biden strategy Indeed. is all built on evasion. And, and it was very different during the Trump years. Absolutely right. Always a pleasure to have you, uh, fierce warrior Congressman Matt Gates. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you, Kimberly.